what's going on everybody it is thursday finally we've got not the best slate tonight uh five games some of them not so great you know thunder suns should be a bloodbath i think warrior spurs is going to be a bloodbath uh heat sixers is good from like a i want to watch it standpoint but not so much from a fun standpoint I don't know. It's going to be a weird one. Five games is... It gets weird. Uh, last night, not good. Um, I had a very large amount of De'Aaron Fox, so when he went down, um, you know, in four minutes, I lit a bunch of money on fire. So that happened. Was lucky enough to finish 25th in uh, this month's free roll, so that was 150 bucks, which was nice. Um but I sank 50% of my lineups almost immediately uh, because of Fox. Um, let me pull up Fantasy Cruncher quick to take a look at the uh, optimal lineups from last night. Yeah, just depressing. No way to recover from it for me last night. I really thought he was in a great spot, and he just, I don't know, wasn't. <laughs> I don't know why Eric Bledsoe has a thumbs down right there. All right, let's grab 100 quick, and we can just take a look at uh, who you needed to have. I don't know why that's on random or anything, so let's try that again. There we go. Yeah, just, just a bummer. Kyle Lowry, I'm not happy with him right now. Laid that egg uh, the night before. Got a little nervous. Went absolutely ham last night. Just day late, or day early in this case. Um, very, very frustrating. So obviously you wanted to have a ton of Lowry if you could. Uh, he's not someone that I targeted. My main point guards last night were uh, Lonzo, um, Fox, uh, God, I'm having a hard time remembering. Uh, Rondo, and then I had a, an okay amount of Augustine. So, you know, Lowry put up 7.4x, which is monstrous. Um, I didn't want any part of Bledsoe, so I was happy about that. But, you know, Lonzo was fine. Um, obviously, Dunn only played, or uh, only Fox only played five minutes, so that's a crater. Um, Augustine was, eh. Um, so, not the best night. A point guard. Uh, if you had Lowry, Dunn, Frank Mason, or Rubio, you were probably pretty happy. Not only did Lowry go off, but Rosen went off. Uh, again, not somebody that I had like an overwhelming amount of. Um, my bigger uh, shooting guard plays last night were Middleton, which was great. Went for 7x. Super happy there. I had a bunch of Bogdan, who cratered. Not very... Uh, that didn't make me very happy at all. And then I had a decent amount of Kobe Simmons, which went well. Um, you know, it was mostly just you needed to have Damar and Chris to really have a shot at the top. Uh, small forward was the Dylan Brooks show. Went for 39 at a 4,500 salary. Uh, I didn't have a bunch of, I didn't have much of Brooks, Ennis, Bullock. Uh, I was pretty heavy on Giannis. Um, less heavy on LeBron. And uh, let's see who else did I have in uh, decent amounts. Hmm. Nobody? Who was the value play? I had a little bit of CJ Miles. Um, oh, Jonathan Simmons. So I was, uh, I was relatively high on Jonathan Simmons, um, which was great, but it really didn't matter much. Uh, Giannis underperformed 3.7x uh, I'd have been better off taking LeBron uh, power forward I had a bundle of Kuzma uh, I did not have a bundle of Aaron Gordon or Blake uh, I had a pretty decent amount of Larry Nance um, but power forward for me I tried to get a decent amount of AD doesn't help that he only played 23 minutes and got hurt classic AD uh, so that was kind of crummy 
I actually like John Henson a lot um, as the news came out and once we knew that Zeller was out, but ultimately he got 19 minutes. Uh, he was in some, some pretty heavy foul trouble, so that kind of sucked. And then finally at center, um, I had a bunch of Drummond, Brooke Lopez, and Vooch. Uh, Drummond was passable. Uh, Vooch had a great night. Brooke Lopez had a great night, uh, but it didn't really matter. Um, Jonas was a smash spot. Uh, you know, obviously Jokic went off. And um, I was dead in the water regardless. <laughs> Uh, best lineup was, I don't know, in the, like the 350s, nothing crazy. But I was just happy to avoid um, avoid De'Aaron Fox in the free play, so I was able to at least uh, roll together a decent lineup. Even dodged the Henson bullet there, which makes me happy. So let's just dig into today. Uh, first game up, Hornets and Nets. Uh, Hornets with the 112.25 implied total, which is third. Um, they are seven-point favorites at home against the Nets. Uh, great matchup for them. Uh, I think uh, the sites know that. They bumped Kemba's salary up like $700, $800 or something like that, knowing he was about to play Brooklyn in an incredible matchup. Um, so just looking at it, Kemba's got the number one matchup, or, you know, point guard for Charlotte has the number one matchup. 13 big games, seven monsters. Uh, they've been getting clobbered at that spot the entire year. Um, opposite regard, uh, Nick Batum uh, has the worst matchup. Nine duds to shooting guards so far this year, so something to keep in mind there. Uh, small forward is in the middle tier. Power forward is a, a pretty solid matchup. And then center, obviously, um, far and away uh, the best center matchup. So, you know, the goal is going to be have a, a pretty decent amount of Charlotte. Um, Kemba is a B plus on both right now. I'm going to give him uh, a little bit of a boost as well because of the matchup. Oddly enough, um, Brooklyn's defense hasn't been horrible uh, lately. Like as a team, which is kind of crazy to me. But, you know, I'm going to want to have, even at that price, I'm going to want to have a fairly sizable amount of Kemba. Uh, Batum, on the other hand, not so much. And that makes me kind of happy that he's grading out, you know, at that $7,300 salary already. Um, not the best. Uh, I'm even going to you know, knock him down a little bit further. He's just somebody I want to make sure that I have very little of. I'd rather have a bunch of Kemba. Uh, Dwight Howard, 8,400 and 8,300. Um, he certainly needs a little bit of a boost. Went for 46 fantasy points uh, two nights ago, which was interesting to see on Embiid um, after having, you know, a couple rough nights of low minutes. Uh, he should fill the stat sheet in whatever minutes he's on the court tonight. Um, hopefully Brooklyn can keep it close and Howard needs to be out there. But he really, I mean, he looks like the best center play on the board today. Uh, Marvin Williams, um, you know, he had a great, the power forward spot is supposed to be a, a really good matchup against Brooklyn um, but with Marvin Williams being so reliant on the three, uh, that is the one thing that Brooklyn is able to do. They do uh, lower the frequency there. So you're, you're betting on Marvin Williams having a good shooting stroke tonight. That seems uh, not like something I really want to do. Uh, so Marvin Williams is not somebody that I'm going to be focusing on um, just because his style of play at the four isn't as optimal against Brooklyn as it is against some other teams. And then from there, if you think that this game can get out of hand, you know, guys like Jeremy Lamb or MKG or Frank Kaminsky could end up being a little bit better, uh, maybe just as like, you know, low-level GPP punts. Um, I wouldn't want to have like a crazy amount of them, but I think that having a lot of Kemba and Dwight 
um, is going to be a real popular opinion tonight. Then we'll go to Brooklyn. Alrighty. So the Nets, 105.25 implied total is 7th. Um, like I said, 7-point underdogs. Uh, they uh, are very bad right now. It's... Um, it's kind of it's kind of sad. I kind of, I, I like Brooklyn. I want them to be better at some point in time, but they need a major influx of talent. They can't be. They're not as bad as uh, the Grizzlies, though. So there's that. So first up is Alan Crab, um, C and C plus. You're going to see a, a, a pretty normal uh, spread here of grades for the Nets, and that's about how I feel for them. I understand why most of these guys would be worked into some lineups, but to focus on any of them seems a little rich. But let's check out the matchup first. Uh, so middle of the pack for point guard. Um, shooting guard near the bottom. Uh, nobody has ever really gone crazy against the Hornets so you know it, I might have to make a little bit of a tweak down to D'Angelo Russell uh, mid tier for oh wrong one alright so small forward is interesting third from the top eight big games against the Hornets seven duds so that's a lot of risk but you know potential for some reward that is something we're going to want to look at. Um, worst matchup for power forwards. 12 duds to power forwards. Um, that makes Damari Carroll look uh, significantly less appealing. And then uh, Jared Allen is uh, has the third best matchup. Six big games. Um, you know, could be a nice sneak, but his minutes have been a little weird lately. He only played 20 last night. Uh, or two nights ago, 17 before that. So I'm not sure what the plan is there. So I think Crab looks okay here. Um, you'll need filler on a five-game slate, so I think that that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie's 6,000 price tag on DraftKings looks pretty good. Um, the guys that I do want to bump down... Wow, D'Angelo Russell's price on FanDuel and DraftKings is weird. But I want to knock him down a little bit. I just don't necessarily trust him for tonight. And then, um, you know, Damari Carroll's already not interesting. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, that's about as... Like, you know, I think, like, all of these grades look pretty good. Um, I'll have low-level ownership on most of the guys that get run for the Nets. Uh, but it's hard to say that I would be confident for any of these guys. There's not any, like, weird quirks for the Hornets where, you know, they foul a bunch of dudes because they don't do that. They're an incredible defensive rebounding team. Their shot profile is all relatively normal. Um, so I don't, I don't see anything that stands out there. Now for Miami, the Heat are hosting the Sixers. Uh, they have a 103.75 implied total. They are one-point underdogs at home. Um, this is a tough matchup from a fantasy perspective. Both teams uh, really, really solid on defense. So it's going to be... Um, points will be at a premium here. So point guard is you know slightly below average for... Oh, wait, I'm starting with the Heat, right? Yeah. Uh, worst matchup for point guards, 10 duds. Um, I'm going to knock Dragic down right now just because of that, so I don't forget. Um, middle tier matchup for Tyler Johnson at shooting guard, who's apparently going to get minutes again. Uh, boom and bust, uh, seven big games, but also seven duds. So... There's a balance there. Uh, lower tier matchup for small forward. Um, no one's really gone nuts against Philly at that point. Just a bunch of duds. 
Uh, it does make me like Josh Richardson a bit less. I'm going to ding him as well. Uh, power forward, also not the best. Um, I'm going to knock down James Johnson, a little bit of uh, Kelly Olynyk. Um, Whiteside should be okay with this matchup, but I want to bring uh, James Johnson down a, a few notches and bring Kelly Olynyk down a few notches. It's not really going to matter all that much. Um, they're not going to grade out very well regardless. But, you know, Richardson's a C- minus and a C+. Plus. Um, that would scare me a little bit. I do usually like him right at that $6,000 price point because I think... Um, that's the spot where he, you know, he shows sort of the most upside in the salary when he could roll up to those like 35, 36 point games. But at the same time, this doesn't feel like the game for it. Uh, you'll see that Dragic is already um, grading out relatively poorly. I think that Winslow continues to be, you know, an interesting play. Um, he's been playing better lately. And playing with some like offensive skill for the first time in a pretty long time. Um, that's usually not his forte, but uh, it's interesting to see him grow. I, I want to see if that he can. I want to see if he can continue that sort of growth um, and live up to the uh, guy that was supposed to get four first round picks um, in a trade, but didn't. Um, I have. I don't have any issues with having him. I'll probably have him in a. a a solid amount of lineups just because of his price point and his position. Um, Tyler Johnson, uh, not super interested. 42.6 fantasy points two nights ago. Um, this doesn't seem like the spot where it's going to happen again. Um, but he needs 26 as a baseline. Would it shock me? Yeah, probably. I, I, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Uh, Whiteside, though. 7,000 on FanDuel uh, at center. I mean, if you can figure out what the deal is with him, um, you know, played 21 minutes in the last game, you know, 19 a couple nights ago. When he gets the run, he's filling up the stat sheet. You would think... He would get some run here, and it'll be a, a much better spot for for him because he's going to have to deal with Embiid, and I'm not I'm not really sure what else what what their plan would be otherwise. It's certainly not going to be Kelly Olynyk. Uh, Embiid will. Oh my God, they'd probably have to call the police. He would just it would be really ugly. So you would think that they would want to have Whiteside's body out there. Um, if it's not going to be him, it almost has to be James Johnson, but he got 14 minutes in the last game. His minutes are yo-yoing everywhere between 16 and 30, so it's uh, it's been a little tricky figuring out the heat rotations, but I'll likely have a good bit of Whiteside. I think that that price is too good to, to pass up for a guy that has, you know, Put up 57.8 fantasy points a couple nights ago. 48 at the end of February. This guy's got crazy upside in his in his game. And for GPPs, that's where you want to be. If he's going to be underpriced, you know, I'll take the risk on the minutes. Uh, anticipating Wayne Ellington to be back, uh, that sort of just makes him and Dwayne Wade not as interesting. Um, if we get any news to the contrary, you know, I don't see... Olinick or James Johnson as particularly viable directly. Um, you kind of got to treat him as a package deal, have a balanced amount of both. Unless we hear something about, you know, who's starting or, you know, that somebody's supposed to get additional run. But again, this isn't the game that I would want to force. Now for Philly. Uh, Mid tier for point guard. Um, you know, slightly above average for Redick, but nothing crazy. Uh, middle of the tier for Covington, slightly below average for Saric, mid-tier for Embiid. It's basically just balance. There's there's nothing great, there's nothing bad. 
Um, it's just a tough game. The one exciting part of this could be Embiid in that uh, he does shoot a ton of free throws and the Heat aren't the best at keeping people off of the line. I remember talking about that previously. What happened the last time that they played? Ooh. Eight dongs twice. They played three times in February? Jesus, schedule makers, come on. They played twice last year in February. Do they, the Sixers and Heat only play in February? So, Embiid had a little bit of foul trouble here. Five fouls in both of those games. Um, 0 for 4 from 3 in the first game is interesting to me. At 9,800 now, that's a, that's a much better price point than the 10-2 or 10-5. I don't have much issue with Embiid tonight. I think center is going to be pretty flush. Um, we'll start with uh, Simmons, though. Sorry, I got off on that Embiid tangent. Uh, Simmons has a C and a C plus, 8,800. Did he roast them on, in one of those games? I feel like he did. Two of them, actually. Well, one of them, actually. Yeah. I think I had him in this game. Not the best one, though. Uh, coming back into Miami. 11 points. 6-6. Six and six. That's a rough game for Ben Simmons. Um... Yeah, he's not somebody I'm going to want a ton of. 8800 is a pretty lofty price point, and you're going to need him to really turn it up to get above value there. So Ben Simmons isn't really for me. Um, you know, Covington I can see popping in to some lineups at small forward, but it, it is nice to see him playing a little bit better, coming off the 40-point game. He had 33 a couple nights ago. Um He's just he, he had been underperforming for so long. I'm, ho I'm hoping he's starting to get some health back. Uh, nothing wild there. I think Embiid is the only guy tonight in this game that, or for Philly at least, that I would be pretty interested in. 9,800 on FanDuel, 9,500 on DK. Coming off of two back-to-back -back games of 30 and 33, uh, sort of makes it even more appealing uh he i mean he he doesn't like white side so that's interesting um so far dwight looks good white side looks good Embiid looks good we're gonna have some more centers to take a look at uh center is going to be a very very interesting spot tonight but now we're gonna get into the games that you actually want to roster people on so Minnesota, 106.25 implied total is sixth. They are one and a half point underdogs at home against the Celtics. It's a real shame that Jimmy Butler isn't healthy for this game because that would have uh, this would have been a lot more interesting. So Boston, um, really good at defending the point guard. Six duds, nobody going really crazy. Uh, similar scenario here for shooting guard. Uh, Bielitsa's got a mid-tier matchup. Um, not the best spot for Taj as well. Lots of duds just across the board here. And then uh, finally, uh, Towns is kind of in the middle of the pack. They have had some big games against them from center, but uh, Horford has also been responsible for a bunch of duds. Man, that's like the perfect grade for Wiggins, C or C minus. Uh, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. I actually don't hate him here tonight. If Boston wasn't so terrifying defensively, but even that has been tapering off. They haven't been as nasty as they normally are. Wiggins does get to the line at a pretty decent clip. Um... I wouldn't mind having some Wiggins, actually. 6400 is a really decent price. 
Uh, when he's up over seven, it makes it pretty difficult, but he's had four straight games in the low 30s, um, which means, you know, he's only a couple shots falling from, you know, a, a six or seven X night. I think a flyer on Wiggins would be very reasonable. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, again, looks like another solid center play. Um, you're going to need 52 plus. Uh, came off a of 71 on March 1st. He's had six days off. Been a crazy amount of rest. Um, I think that's probably going to be really helpful for a team like Minnesota that runs their starters into the ground. So, yeah, this could be a, an interesting game that might be a little underrepresented uh, just because of you know Boston's reputation for defense. But I wouldn't have a lot of issues having, you know, any of those top six guys, really. Um, you know, minimal amounts of Jamal Crawford, sure. But Wiggins, I think, is in an okay spot. Towns is in an okay spot. Gibson, Teague, Bielitsa. Um I don't have a ton of, uh, ton of issue having a bunch of Minnesota here. I think that not having played since March 2nd is going to be really beneficial to them. Um, I think it'll be easier to go somewhere other than Towns just because of all of the value that's out there at center tonight. Um, so I think that, like, I think Wiggins will look pretty popular, actually. Um, how's Taj been lately? 56 and 55, so that's 28. As a baseline, one big 38-point game of 44. Yeah, so, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with Taj either. Um, I like Minnesota. Um, I'm ang- I want to do a little bit of digging into, you know, sort of what the expected ownership is going to be tonight because they feel like the spot where you might be able to extract a little bit of extra value. Now, Boston, uh, 107.75 implied total, uh, one and a half point favorites. This is the fifth highest implied total. Uh, expectation is that Kyrie will play. If he doesn't, you know, feel free to bump up Smart and Rozier. I don't generally like taking anybody on Boston. I always feel like they're going to underperform. The grades generally uh, bear that out. Um, let's take a look at those matchups. Uh, bah, bah, bah. So, obviously, that's a Shane Larkin. He's just in. That's these starters are listed from uh, Fantasy Five by Fives page anyway. Um, but either way, Minnesota has been really good against point guards. Uh, no gigantic games. Eight duds. Uh, so that makes me feel comfortable to avoid Kyrie in any major amounts. Um, nothing to write home about at shooting guard. That's sort of boom bust. Uh, terrible matchup for small forwards. Um, keep in mind that is almost assuredly because of Jimmy Butler. Uh, I don't get the sense that Bielitsa is going to be the same sort of uh, defensive lockdown guy. Their defensive rating as a team with Butler off the floor is dramatically different. So I wouldn't read as much into uh, the awfulness at small forward here just because of uh, Butler being out. And then uh, center and power forward are both in the mid-tier. Nothing crazy to pay attention to there. Yeah, I think I'm going to want to bump Kyrie down a little bit. Maybe just a percentage point or two. Um, Doesn't feel like a spot where I would want a bunch of him. Um, Just feels a little risky to me. But might not have many options on a, a five-game slate. But given the opportunity, I'd probably prefer to just have a little bit more Kemba. Uh, Horford is fine, 6,600 and 6,400 on both sites. Uh, so you're looking 33 as a baseline on FanDuel. He's only hit that on the dot once. Um, I want to see, what's his chart look like right now? He has been uh, not good if I remember correctly. 
Somehow when I opened my workbook recently, all of the things that were formatted as general formatted themselves to time, which is, you know, not how it should be. All right, so there's Horford since January 1st, and that is just starting at the beginning of February. He fell off a cliff. He had a, a really solid game in 22 minutes, uh, his most recent effort. But other than that, I mean, that is a very, very steady decline. Um... Might be a good time to buy low on him, but I don't necessarily see it. And then for the rest of the guys, for Brown and Tatum and Morris and Smart, I mean, you're flipping coins. Um, you know, the shots are going to fall for one of those guys. I'm not entirely sure which one of those guys it's going to be. Um, I wouldn't look to be overexposed to any of them. Uh, they're, they're a hard team to peg down. Now... The Oklahoma City Thunder, 119.25 implied total is first. They are 10.5 point favorites at home against the Phoenix Suns, a team that is not the best. Um, Russ roasted them a couple weeks ago, maybe? Two weeks? Three weeks? Time, well, nope. Not two weeks or three weeks. Six days. Time is just like a weird thing to me now. I can't track it. Um, but yeah, 43, 14, and 8. Uh, had no problems doing whatever he wanted to. Phoenix was actually able to keep it close, which was fascinating. Uh, it also allowed Russ to play 39 minutes. Um, I don't have him at that sort of uh, minutes limit or a minute count, but... You know, I don't have a problem with having these guys tonight. Uh, if Oklahoma City is going to blow them out, it's going to be because of Russ and Paul George and potentially Mello. Uh, Russ with the second best point guard matchup, that should come as no surprise. I don't want to give him too much of a boost, um, but I think he looks good, obviously. Uh, at shooting guard... Also, second best matchup, Suns not very good. Best matchup at small forward, best matchup at power forward, second best matchup at center. I'm not telling anybody that things they don't already know. The Suns are bad at defense, and you want guys that play against the Suns. So I do want to bump up George uh, because I think he's a little underrepresented here. And I want to make sure that uh, he never slips through the cracks. But yeah, I anticipate having a decent amount of Paul George, a decent amount of Russell Westbrook. Um, you know, Steven Adams, I think, looks great. I'll probably go to the well with Mello a little bit. Uh, I wish that he would have had a, a better game against them recently, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Um... I'm going to hope that they just hang it on them and they're the guys that are responsible. And they should be. They take a, a large majority of the shots. Um, if there's going to be a blowout in an Oklahoma City-Phoenix game, I have a hard time believing it's because like Corey Brewer, Patrick Patterson, and Jeremy Grant were unstoppable in the second unit. Um, it's going to be because Russ has like a triple-double in eight minutes or something. So, yeah. Uh, very comfortable loading up with OKC. I don't have many concerns with the blowout. Uh, let's get a sip here. Suns. One hundred eight point seven five implied total is fourth. Uh, Oklahoma City's defense has been tapering off from a fantasy perspective, so it's something to keep in mind. Um, at point guard, it's a mid-tier matchup. But Devin Booker with the best matchup uh, for shooting guards. Nine big games and five monsters. Uh, makes me like him a lot tonight. Dude is not afraid to shoot. Um, near the bottom, though, for TJ Warren, it's been uh, tough sledding for him. Or not for him, but uh, for small forwards. And then uh, Dragon Bender uh, could potentially have some upside. Um Seven big games and two monsters. Uh, you know, at his low price, he's obviously a GPP play. 
And then finally, uh, Tyson Chandler or Alex Lynn or whoever you want to call the center has the worst spot in the day. So let's go ahead and give Booker a boost because I'd like to have a bunch of him. Um, and then I think I want to go ahead and give... There was somebody else. Oh, I do want to knock down TJ Warren a little bit. A little bit more. That's fine. Uh, Bender, Bender, 3,900. You know, I'll give him a slight nudge. Yeah, I, I'm okay with those numbers now. Oh, God, I'm tired. My wife got a phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning, randomly. Uh, like, you know, not anybody we knew. Ringer was on, so I've been awake for a, a hot minute. I'm exhausted. Uh, I would temper my expectations on TJ Warren, but there's definitely upside in his price. 6,500 is appealing. Um, I think it's a tough matchup, but sometimes price wins out. Uh, this is a guy that can get up into the 40s, and at 6,500, and a guy that is going to shoot the ball, um, sometimes it just goes in. But Booker, uh, at 8,200 on FanDuel, the, the $8,900 price tag on DraftKings is a little prohibitive. You'll still have him on a five-game slate for sure, but uh, he's in an exceptional spot here. Um, I have no issues running out like overwhelming amounts of Devin Booker. Um, I think that Bender is a perfectly acceptable GPP guy. This is a guy that takes 64% of his shots from three. Uh, Thunder give up a lot of corner threes, so you know if you get lucky, Bender could get hot. Um, Sometimes he runs that up into the 30s and 40s, so, you know, he's a fluky dude. Alfred Payton only played 24 minutes in the last game. Is that the one? Did he get the gate there? I think so. Um, but he's been playing really well uh, for the Suns. I'm anxious to see where that goes for them and, you know, if they bring him back at what number they bring him back at. Uh, I don't have any real problems with him at 7,300. Uh he went at Russ pretty hard um, in that game a couple nights ago. I don't. I wouldn't change a thing about that uh, expectation. I, I no issues with having a bunch of Peyton, and I think that Peyton and Booker go pretty well together. So um, I wouldn't have any problem having um, stacks of those guys. And then Josh Jackson is perfectly fine as filler at small forward. Um, it's sort of like T.J. Warren, but lighter just because of the price. Um, there's a lot of risk in Josh Jackson. You can certainly get those 11 and 13 point nights, but he can also roll it up into the 36s, 38s, and 50s, and uh, all of that would be big time value. So, you know, buyer beware on him, but at 5,300 and his style, he's got a lot, a lot of upside in a GPP. Cash, I'd be terrified. Last game on the night, Warriors and Spurs. This one's just a bummer because you want this game to be better, but 116.5 implied total is second for the Warriors. 11.5 point underdogs. Um, I mean, the Spurs are just... They're not the Spurs right now. Obviously, no Kawhi. Uh, Pau Gasol is doubtful right now, so you know there's going to be a steady diet of... Bertans, or I don't even know if Joffrey Laverne can be on the floor. Um, he's just that bad defensively. So we're going to have, you know, a decent chunk of Draymond, Clay, Durant, and Curry. We'll look at the matchups. Um, Curry with a, a pretty good one, uh, third best matchup for point guards. Clay is uh, a little bit trickier. Well, they have had a bunch of big games, uh, a lot of duds. At shooting guard so it doesn't necessarily feel like a clay night um, not really the best spot for Durant either but it wouldn't shock me if he had a big game here um, just because of the gravity of it all but I think I prefer Curry a little bit more um, 
nothing to write home about for Draymond. It's a that's a pretty average setup, and then I don't really want any centers that aren't Draymond. Uh, I do want to give Curry just the slightest boost. So yeah, if we look at this here, uh, Draymond under eight thousand is always appealing. Um, I think a B minus is a decent price or a, a, a decent grade for him right now. Um, I think that Draymond is uh, really, really safe from a cash perspective tonight. Uh, Clay is the one guy that I don't have a ton of interest in. Um, and the grades are sort of bearing out exactly how I feel, uh, at least on the FanDuel side. I like Curry the most, then Draymond, then Durant, then Clay, And that delineation is uh, is perfectly set up right now. Um, I think Curry's in line for another big night. Went for 56 uh, two nights ago. I think that he's going to keep that going um, in this Spurs matchup. And finally, the Spurs, 11.5 point underdogs in Golden State. Uh, total is eighth, and uh, again, they're they're likely to not have Pau Gasol. Um, nothing wild at at point guard, you know, it's right around average. Uh, same for shooting guard. Uh, Kyle Anderson in a pretty good spot at small forward. Um, it's just been a lot of either big or small. So, you know, six duds is, it's good for the night, but it is a little scary. But nine big games and four monsters. I like the idea of that. Uh, Aldridge is mid-tier. And then uh, what would be POW is also mid-tier. So nothing crazy for Aldridge one way or the other, where he's, whether he's playing power forward or center. Um, he does grade out pretty well. 8200 on FanDuel is a nice price. Uh, 7700 on DK. He should be getting some extra touches with Gasol out. So uh, he hasn't been the best lately, but he has gotten a couple days rest. So... I don't necessarily mind having some Aldridge. There's not much else to like in this game. Um, I'm a little scared of Murray here. I'll have him. Um, but I'm just worried that there's not enough creation um, on the Spurs side to really break down Golden State. And I would expect Golden State to get up for this game defensively. So, you know, th and that's why you see an 11.5 point line. Um, I could see using Kyle Anderson as some filler and some Patty Mills as like a big time GPP play, but you know, like Bertans and Joffrey, uh, even Rudy Gay, those those aren't guys that I'm really interested in. The Spurs are just in a bad way. So that's it. It's a relatively tiny slate. Um, oh, you can see the minutes. Yeah, there it is, coming up as time. So annoying. Let's toss this into the optimizer and see what we get. I'll probably go live tonight, um, depending on what news comes out throughout the day. So pay attention to Twitter and uh, I'll let everybody know. It's not really the sexiest uh, night to go live. I don't want to. I, I should have just gone live yesterday. Uh, I didn't really pay attention to the upcoming schedule. But if we're gonna have, you know, it's possible we don't really get news on those eight o'clock games before lock, and it's gonna make for a, a relatively boring show. So maybe I'll do like a half hour instead of the normal hour. Um, we'll see. I do have to rush home and pick up the dogs today. Uh, the wife has a haircut appointment, so we'll see. I'll be in touch. Uh, let's bump that rando up to 10. Let her rip. Yeah, a lot of suns. That doesn't shock me. A lot of Kemba. So I would want to start right off the bat. Kemba, Devin Booker. Um, 
Where would I want to go next? Honestly, I think I might want to go Wiggins just to get a piece of that game. That takes me down to seven lineups. Um, probably don't want that Cody Zeller lineup, so I can ignore that one pretty easily. That's more that's more uh, Phoenix than I would like, but it, that's close. Um, I don't love the idea of Rondé Hollis Jefferson, but this might be the, my favorite one of everything that I see here. But I would want to do a little bit more tweaking. Um, actually, if I could do something other than this with Cody Zeller, but it makes it a little tough to make that fit with Russ. Hopefully some news comes out and opens up some things. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty tight. I think fitting Russ is going to be difficult without making some major concessions. And finally we'll look at DraftKings. Ah, almost left it. Bump up the rando. And oh, uh, go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So that that's a really good way to tell how balanced everything needs to be. Um, if you just let it rip now on my projections, the highest exposure we have on anybody is fifty percent. Um, that means that it's hard to fit anybody in. Nobody just standing out like crazy on DraftKings. It means you're going to need a lot of options. So I would want to start with Kemba. Um, with that much bender, I'm willing to go there and call him like a, my, my GPP guy. It makes me think that Winslow looks okay here. Um, TJ Warren, Aldridge, Towns, or Westbrook. I'll trust Towns on DraftKings, so that gets me to five lineups. Like, I think this looks good. Um, we're getting a little bit too much Murray, I think, which makes me want to dig into it a little bit further. Um, this is probably too much Minnesota, but I think it looks like a, a nice GPP lineup. But really, it's tough. There's there's way too much balance. I ran 100 lineups. You know, that's one, two, three, four, five, six guys at 24% or higher at point guard. Josh Richardson's kind of breaking the mold here on DK, but, you know, relatively smooth ownership at shooting guard. 53, 41, 33, 33, 31, normal. 42, 41, 39, 37, 33. All of these guys are just, everybody's just bunched together and bunched together. Um, it's going to be hard to fit in high salary guys because there's not enough offset at the bottom. So keep an eye on news. It's going to be really important for tonight. Uh, five games, uh, every little bit of value helps. That's all I've got tonight, or today, this morning, whatever. Uh, so like it, subscribe. You guys know the drill. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I'll have updates throughout the day. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up here on the comments, on my Twitter feed, or on Reddit. And uh, if you pr uh, projections are always out there on my website, so you know, go there, grab them, use them. But best of luck tonight. Uh, let's go get it. Have a good one.